Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 42. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 4.xlsm, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet B for Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem. Now, we've been talking about conditional and joint and even marginal probabilities. Now, in this context, when we talk about Bayes' theorem, we're going to call the starting probabilities prior probabilities. So for past data, we said, hey, the probability that someone would leave their garage door open is 0.25. The probability not leave the garage door open, 0.75, right? So that's a starting point. But now, now that we're in this category, right, leave garage open, we also have this other probability, conditional probability, the probability that stuff was stolen given that you left the garage door open. So we'll record it like this, probability of stuff stolen given that the garage was open. And I have a little notation here. That's our conditional probability, and that's given to us, right? With that, with those two probabilities, we can calculate our joint. This is an and probability. And I, I have a, a notation for this and this, but not this. I should have done that. This one is just a uh, probability of garage door open and stuff stolen, right? So we've seen that a bunch of times in, in the textbook. They use the intersection symbol. So that's the joint probability. Here it would be um, garage open, uh, garage not open. So you can imagine there's a label right there for those two right there. So we know how to do that. We say uh, our prior probability times our conditional probability. This is just like uh, in our tree diagram, right? We calculate and multiply those two together. Now we can copy this down. Those are relative cell references. And those are our joint probabilities. All of that so far we know. But now we want to talk about something different, posterior probabilities. This is Bayes' theorem. We want to calculate, now that we know something is stolen, right? So started leaving the garage open, then something got stolen. I always think of it going this way. We're going this way. Now we calculated the joint, right? It's going this way. Uh, left the garage door open and stuff got stolen. But now what's this? Gara what's the probability the garage door open was given given that stuff was stolen? Well, the stuff was stolen came after, right? Well, this is a posterior probability, and we can calculate it. As long as these two categories are mutually exclusive, meaning they, they take up the, these two categories will constitute all of the stuff stolen. We can simply add the joint probabilities up. Alt equals, and now once we have this total, we can actually just kind of use common sense here. Hey, this is a part, this is a part, this is the total, which is the probability that all stuff was stolen. We can compare this part to the total and calculate our posterior probability. So the probability that the garage was open given that stuff was stolen equals this divided, the part divided by the total. Now, that F7, I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it. So when I copy it down, I can ca calculate probability garage was open given stuff was stolen and probability that the garage was not open given that stuff was stolen. Now, if you, this tabular method is uh, quite nice and makes kind of sense, especially if you think of this as parts compared to the whole. But sometimes you want to do it all in one formula. But I want to think about how I calculated this. This is kind of the hard part right here. We already calculated uh, joint probabilities before. But if we know all the joint probabilities and we add them up, we can just compare part to the whole. So is there another way to do this instead of building a little tabular form like this? Well, yes, there is. Look at this. This cell times that. Enter. This cell times that. Notice there's two cells. Well, then let's look at this. Then we add, right? Two cells multiplied by two other cells. So it's like a column times a column where we go this times that plus this times that. We can simply use the sum product function. The sum product function is specifically built to multiply two ranges that are the same dimension, meaning one column by two rows or whatever, they're the same dimension, and then add. So 
So we can simply take that column times this column, multiply, and then add. Thus, the product means the multiply, and the sum means the adding. That means down here, we already know how to calculate a joint probability. So this times that divided by the sum product multiplying both of them. So equals in open parentheses, calculate your joint, and then simply divide it by the sum product. Because it's the total, right? That's the part. And we need to add up the total for the joint probability. So go boop, boop, and close parentheses. And that will give us our same number as up there. Now, uh, certainly the tabular form is uh, quite nice. Uh, but if you want to do it all in one cell there, you have it. So we started with our prior probabilities. We had our conditional. We calculated a joint, added them up. As long as they're mutually exclusive, we can compare the parts to the whole. Uh, and calculate posterior probability, which in essence is kind of going backwards, right? Probability the garage was open given that stuff was stolen. All right, that's it for chapter four. We'll see you next chapter for chapter five.